So I chose Raven as the love for my practicing. She's really cool. She's probably my favorite Teen Titan. Really. Because, I mean, I love Beast Boy and I love Robin. Really, they're awesome. But I think I relate most to Raven and her introverted nature. But, um, <laughs> and that she can be quite cynical. But besides that, I think the fact that she's innately evil, like she comes from a very evil background, but she chooses to be good, you know, despite that. I think that's the coolest thing about her. And, um, but even the way she does it, she goes through such lengths of suppressing her emotions to stay good, but she actually becomes the most powerful when she actually accepts her emotions and takes control of them, you know? So, I think that's the cool, I think that's really cool. <laughs> The more matted the surface, the less reflective it would be, and the darker the surface, the more contrast it would have, so the better you would see the image. The point of this assumption is to figure out a simple way of looking at objects so that I could replicate their texture. The assumption wasn't necessarily wrong, but it didn't account for different materials, like metal. I mean, you can buff every surface to be super smooth, but it'll never be as reflective as metal is. So I did a little research on the difference between specular reflection, when light bounces off a surface at the same angle it came in, creating a focused mirror-like image, and diffused reflection, when light bounces off a surface in many different directions, creating a cloudy, more faded reflection. And here's what I found. When light hits a shiny marble countertop surface, there may be some specular reflection but the material itself is diffusing the rest of the light. The material itself is not specular. But metal is a different story. Interestingly, the same characteristic that makes metal conductive is the same characteristic that makes metal so reflective. When light goes to hit a smooth metal surface, on an atomic level, the electrons vibrate and create an electrical field preventing the wave of light from being diffused by the surface of the metal, shooting the light right back out at the angle at which it came. Specular reflection. Water and glass have a similar appearance, but not because of electrons on their surface, but because there's nothing really intrinsically in them to diffuse the light. The point is, to really understand texture, you can't just go by what's on the outside of an object. You have to understand what it's made out of, and how that material responds to light. In order to get a better understanding of this in practice, I do a few short studies. Because the jeans started to look a little specular when I attempted to color the bright areas with a vibrant purple, I realized that changes in color play a big part in indicating what the material is. Using a muted purple instead did a better job of indicating the brightness was because the jeans were worn, not shiny. Because my feathers weren't really looking like feathers, they were looking more fluffy, like fur. I learned that it's important to focus on describing how the material behaves when it's hit by light before you describe the surface. The feather acts more like one flat surface rather than a series of little hairs. I tried this one three times and I kinda got it on the last one. With this study I came to the understanding that specular means reflecting all. So the more specular an object is, the more context driven it is, meaning the more its appearance is dependent on the surroundings of it. That also means that it will reflect a wider range of colors and values. The rest of these studies are just me trying to get an understanding of some of the materials. But here actually, here you can see me trying to put a texture over the velvet, which unfortunately didn't work. I mean, I really like using textures. It makes things look cool, but if you're going for accuracy in texture, nothing beats doing it manually. I wanted to model how I did this on what I learned from my studies. 
So I first started with trying to describe the actual materials and how they reacted to the light. I gave the skin mostly soft transitions from light to dark, with the exception of some sharp peaks and ridges around the nose. The hair is actually why I studied those raven feathers. I thought it would be cool to make the hair resemble them. The suit material was kind of hard to get, until I remembered that the more specular something is, the more it varies from light to dark. So I made the brights brighter and the darks darker. The velvet cloak I studied the most. It's almost metallic the way it reflects light, in a way that almost doesn't care about the light around it. But the golden pendants sure did care about the light around them. They're like little golden mirrors. <laughs> so now that I've described the material, I want to describe the surface texture. Individual hair strands, crinkles in her cape, creases in her suit, and then I'm done. <laughs>